So how should you prepare for those infamous coding interviews? Well, I don't really know, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did. So for those not familiar with me, I just graduated from UC San Diego, well, just as in, in June 2020, but I had two software engineering internships, my degree was in math and computer science, and I'm now a technical program manager at Microsoft. As much as we all hate the coding, whiteboarding interview questions, most large tech companies are gonna ask you some sort of technical coding question. So whether that's in person on a whiteboard, maybe over video chat in an IDE, or just a technical phone screen. Now there are a couple different types of actual coding interviews. So there's primarily like the technical phone screen, which is like sort of the first gateway to getting a in-person interview where you might just get a technical question over the phone or you'll get like an online assessment. And then there's also the in-person whiteboarding questions. Now, preparing for those first screenings, those online assessments is pretty difficult and I didn't, I never did like crazy well on any online assignments or any sort of programming take home tests, but I think what did help me was honestly just doing a lot of them. So when I was applying to internships online, I was applying to a lot and I was pretty much just getting a online assessment within the first day or two days immediately after applying. So I'd pretty much just review some algorithms and data structures and you know, just like clear my head and then just start the online assessment, which you usually have some sort of like block of time to do, whether that's two or six hours or whatever. And then once you end up just taking a bunch of them, you start to feel more confident. Now, I've noticed that not every company does this, especially if you have recruiter contacts, but if you're applying just purely online, no recruiter contacts, you'll likely get some sort of online assignment. But again, I wanna stress that my online assignments and my purely online applications that I submitted with no prior recruiter contact actually never turned out to anything. So giving tips on that, you know, doesn't feel super helpful. So what I am going to address is how to prepare for those in-person coding whiteboarding interviews, which you're being evaluated both on your coding ability as well as your ability to explain it. There's gonna be an actual interviewer there. So whether that's in person or via video chat, it's a much more dynamic sort of interviewing style rather than just a static sort of online assessment where you're just sort of answering questions. But in order to get an in-person interview, you're gonna need a strong resume and recruiter contacts. So I've partnered with Paper Moon Tech that creates a computer science resume template kit designed specifically for computer science majors and those looking to work in large tech companies. Now, all of their resumes are 100% ATS friendly, which basically means they bypass those automated resume filters to optimize your resume being seen by an actual person instead of getting those auto rejections. Paper Moon Tech was kind enough to let me check out the templates and they are all based in Google Docs, which makes it super easy to fill in your information. And I actually found this part crazy. They literally have a 1000 plus like LinkedIn contact list of recruiters when you buy the resume template kit from all major tech companies, which was pretty insane when I was looking at it. I agreed to partner with them because it seemed like just a bunch of useful and valuable resources that I wish I had when I was applying to internships and new grad positions. Also this month, 5% of all sales are going to the charity Girls Who Code. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, definitely check out the affiliate link in the description below. And the first 20 people to use code Michael, M-I-Q-L at checkout will get 20% off. So what did I do when I was applying for internships? The whole interview process is pretty nerve wracking. Like we could just be honest about that. But my first in-person coding interview was actually a final round interview for the company Western Digital for when I was applying for an internship. I think it might've been my junior year. And before that I had another internship, but that didn't really require any sort of coding question because when I was a freshman and a sophomore, those sort of interviews, they were less, you know, code this for me questions. And I had a lot of online assignments, like I mentioned, but this was like my first final round whiteboarding coding question. So I had a total of four interviews there, two of which were technical, two behavioral, each about an hour long. So the two primary resources I use that I'm sure most of you are familiar with are the book, Cracking the Coding Interview, and lead code. But at the same time, I was in college studying computer science and math, so I was 
in computer science classes, pretty much coding in like C++ almost every day as a part of my advanced data structures and algorithms class. So getting that daily practice as a part of my college education definitely made me more comfortable when I was doing like lead code questions. But it wasn't C++, so as a tip, coding questions in C++ isn't like the greatest. They always say do what, what you're most comfortable in, but honestly, like just try, learning Python just really helps with coding interviews. But I chose C++ because, you know, I had a couple weeks to prepare for this interview, so I didn't actually know I was going to be having this final round interview and having having this sort of uh, whiteboard and coding question. So it's always good to sort of continuously prepare because you never know when you're going to get that interview. Up to this point, I hadn't really been preparing besides doing my programming assignments as a part of like my degree. So I only had a couple of weeks to prepare. So I started reading through cracking the coding interview and leaving like post-it notes on pages that I thought were important. Now I wasn't like vigorously reading through every single page, but rather trying to extract important information to, you know, to try to be efficient. Now, if I'm being honest, I didn't think cracking the coding interview was anything like mind blowing. Like the stuff in there, I felt was useful as a reminder, but I wasn't like changing my entire perspective on the coding interview because I've already been watching like YouTube videos and I was somewhat familiar on the process. What I think it did do well is it sort of puts you into that interviewer mindset. The way I like to think about it is sort of like a switch. So you can sort of picture like in your mind, like a big light switch. So when you're getting into interviews, final round interviews, technical phone screens, you want to be, you want to sort of flip that switch and turn on that like interview mode. So you have to think about how to answer questions. Well, what does the interviewer want to hear? What's, you know, what are good things to portray? How do you, you know, explain your resume, projects you worked on? And it's very much a mindset that when you're going through all of these interviews, you sort of want to practice and like, you know, turn on the switch. But what I found most useful and sort of the meat and potatoes of what cracking the coding interview sort of had was doing lead code questions. So not just doing the coding questions and looking at the answers that like lead code actually provides, but look at the community answers because people sometimes find some like really ingenious ways of solving these problems. And I found that a lot of their solutions were much simpler or better explained than the ones that lead code actually provided. So definitely check out like the community provided uh, answers for whatever programming language you're choosing. Now, remember, I was in college full time preparing for these interviews, so I didn't dedicate like all of my time to just doing pure lead code questions. Like I still had to do regular programming assignments, which definitely gave me some more stuff to talk about in the behavioral interviews, but I also had to do like essays and, you know, other college stuff. So I couldn't dedicate like my entire life to just doing like 200 lead code questions a day. But another thing I found helpful was trying to look up like specific questions for that given company. Uh, usually those are a little bit harder to come by, but sometimes you can type in like company, interview questions, whatever. Sometimes there's some useful stuff there. So just doing like a brief read over of those also helped me. So interview day came around and I've told this story before, but you know, I'll keep it brief. So I flew to Western Digital's campus in the morning, had the four interviews and then flew home all within one day. So it was kind of long, a bit tiring, but in terms of the two technical interviews that I had, I think the structure was behavioral interview, technical, technical, behavioral. I would say that the technical questions were more like easy to medium level lead code questions. And honestly, when I had the questions, I felt like pretty confident. I kind of understood the questions within, you know, the first five or 10 minutes, and then I could sort of approach the solution and then explain my thought process and then time, space, complexity, all that good stuff. So I felt pretty confident. Again, I answered them in C++, which probably isn't the greatest answer or greatest programming language to answer them in. Python would have been better, but I, f I still felt good. But unfortunately, a couple of weeks later, I found out that they were gonna go with another candidate for that engineering internship. And I was like, all right. You know, fortunately that summer, I did have an internship with Northrop Grumman as a software engineering intern. So it all worked out in the end. But I think that that experience was really, really great because it was sort of like my first software engineering internship experience like in person like I had all of these previous online assignments but seeing what sort of questions they ask and how you how just the process goes for the first time was like a really valuable learning experience even though I didn't get the internship so my next 
in-person or in-person technical interview was actually for Microsoft. So at the time I was studying in Scotland, studying abroad, highly recommend. But before leaving, I was actually in contact with a Microsoft recruiter after I was finishing up my internship at Northrop Grumman. I've told this story before, so I'm just going to skip right to the technical interview and specifically about preparing for it. So the technical interview was via video chat because I was in Scotland. What did I do when trying to prepare for specifically the Microsoft technical interview? Now, I know I said I'm a technical program manager in the beginning of this video, which I am, but this interview was actually for the software engineer position. Uh, and I actually did get a position at Microsoft as a software engineer, but my now current manager reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be a technical program manager. So I transitioned to becoming a technical PM after receiving a software engineer interview and offer. So I primarily focused on lead code because my only other experience with in-person coding interviews like whiteboarding questions was that Western Digital interview, uh, like I think it was like six or seven months prior. And I felt like lead code was like the most tangible thing that helped me in those interviews. Like, cause I had seen those questions or very similar questions on lead code and I knew how to approach them. So I figured I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna study a little bit more because I felt confident last time. So if I do the same thing, I should feel confident again, right? Spoiler alert it didn't work. <laughs> but the way I view studying for coding interviews is very much like studying for a test. And the way I study for tests is I like physically write out notes. So when I was in college, whenever I had a big test coming up, I would basically go through all of the notes, all of the homework and, you know, sit down with a notepad and just sit there and extract the most important information. And this is really, really good for math classes because there's so much like jargon in in math textbooks and in math homework assignments there's just so much math notes there's just so much words so taking the important formulas taking out the important concepts taking out important examples and then i would basically write it in by hand in a packet of notes so over a course of two to three days i would have pretty much all of what I thought was the most important notes in a packet. So I didn't have to flip through a bunch of PowerPoints or professor notes or the textbook because I had it all right in a packet. I highly suggest trying that at least once because that could definitely help you. It definitely helped me with, if there's a lot of information, making it very concise. So that way uh, you can just sort of flip through it and make sure you know all of the important concepts. Preparing for this technical interview, I pretty much did the same thing. So I would do lead code questions, but I would also physically write them down in this packet of notes. So I would, you know, write out the question and then write out the solution. And I think that also helps, even though like this interview was via video chat and I actually had to like type it out. I think it really would have helped if I was in person because you know, you get the same like writing muscle memory. And I also feel like writing out stuff just helps me remember. But I would also write like important algorithms like BFS or Dijkstra's, uh, making sure I understand like the pseudocode of, the, of those algorithms and what they're actually supposed to do, when to use them, as well as different data structures. So by the end of my studying time, I had this like packet of lead code questions that I wrote by hand data structure, descriptions, algorithms, pseudocode, all of that good stuff. Uh, and then as well as, you know, common interview questions that they might ask. So when the technical interview came around, I would say I was definitely nervous, but I also felt confident. Like I had this packet of notes that I had been studying for a couple weeks. Again, I was studying abroad, so I was having to do, you know, regular assignments at the same time. So I couldn't dedicate all my time, but I, I felt okay. But I would say I got one question and it was way harder than the technical questions I had at Western Digital. Now, this was for a full-time software engineering position, so I expected it to be harder or there to be more questions, but it's just one question that was fairly, fairly hard. I don't even know if you could find it on lead code. Maybe it would be a lead code hard. I don't know if you could even find it there. Kind of caught me off guard, but basically what I just did was, you know, you just have to start attacking the problem. You have to sort of just, Start writing out pseudocode, explaining your thought process, and just seeing, you know, problems are going to come up, bugs are going to come up, but you just have to sort of, you have to start the process. So that's what I did. So I just started tackling the problem and explaining my thought process. And these are two very important points I want to mention. Now, I'm not 
a software engineering expert or technical interview expert. I'll leave that to Clement Mihalescu. So the first thing I think you should do is ask clarifying questions. So let's say you're given an array. You can ask, is this array sorted? What sort of data types are in this array? And hopefully that will maybe lead you down to the solution of the problem. The second thing I think you should do is explain your thought process in this. I think I did well because as I mentioned, the question was very hard and you know, I'm not a savant programmer, so I didn't get it in 10 minutes. Uh, it did take me some time, but I think what I did do well, despite, you know, doing <laughs> some things wrong was explaining how is, how I was actually thinking about going about the problem. And I think a lot of interviewers are both looking for your technical ability as well as your ability to explain it. And I honestly suggest you should just sort of learn in interview situations to sort of just think out loud. So you could be like, oh, I'm gonna attack it this way. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna think about doing it this way. Maybe I'll use this data structure. I think al this algorithm would be helpful here. So even if you aren't on the right path, the interviewer can sort of keep keep up and maybe give you some hints to go down the right path. I've explained my feelings in this interview before, but to summarize, I didn't feel super confident. There were several situations where I thought I had the solution and then I would ask the interviewer, hey, is this right? And then he would say, why don't you check it over again? But the interviewer, I will say, was super nice, made a very nerve wracking situation much more relaxed, very accommodating, very, just a very nice interviewer. And I hope all interviewers can act like that. <laughs> Eventually I did get a solution. It was not the optimal solution, but it was a solution to a very hard problem. So I was proud of getting the solution within the time frame. I was worried because I didn't get the optimal solution. And I did ask a lot of questions. So I finished the interview and again, I didn't feel great. I definitely felt like I could have done better. Luckily, I found out that I would be getting an offer to be a software engineer at Microsoft. Now, like I mentioned, eventually I would transition to becoming a technical program manager. Uh, so it's always funny. People always ask me like, hey, like how do I prepare for the, the program manager interview? And I'm like, I don't really know. I interviewed as a software engineer. So Maybe if, uh, maybe I'll make a video about that, about, you know, if I can ask some other people that did PM interviews. So interviews are very tricky because you never really know, you know, what brought you up and what brought you down. So maybe I thought my technical interview brought me down, but maybe my behavioral interviews or my, you know, technical discussions brought me up, or maybe, you know, my resume brought me up, or maybe like my school was a booster, maybe my personality was a booster, maybe they weren't all negative things, who really knows, that's the thing about technical interviews is that it's it's definitely tough to know where you stand and what's actually going to help you and not help you out. Now again, I don't claim to be particularly gifted at technical interviews, but I th hope and I think that my experiences and my processes could hopefully give you a new perspective on maybe some ways that you might want to prepare, like making those, you know, note packets. I highly suggest doing that. I still like doing that if I ever have to study for anything, or maybe some ways you don't want to prepare. Maybe you don't want to read Cracking the Coding interview or don't do late code. Um, but those, everything, every little thing helps. And definitely as you do more interviews, you will just get more confident and you'll be able to flip that switch a little bit easier. But again, to get those interviews, you need a strong resume. So again, definitely consider checking out Paper Moon Tech with the affiliate link in the description below and use code M-I-Q-L Michael at checkout. The first 20 people to do that will get 20% off. Thank you all for watching. I don't know if you noticed, but this video might look slightly different. I got a new camera, so hopefully it looks better. Thank you guys all for the support. Consider checking out one of my past videos, my past self with Nike Daily. Consider checking out one of my futures future videos and my future self would also thank you dearly. My name is Michael. You can always count on bad British accents from your boy. If you are new to the channel, I make college advice, tech videos, computer science videos, all good things like that. So if any of those sound interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel and leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments below. That's all from me. Hopefully I'll see you in another one. Bye bye.